Good morning, Hornets. It's a wonderful Thursday here at BCHS for your host, Avery. And I'm Carly. Let's start out with today's lunch. Today, we'll be enjoying Mexican Crispitos with Frito salad, steamed corn, cucumber slices, pineapple, and cold milk. Now, let's jump into today's celebrations with these holidays. And now a rundown of your top five news stories. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Smith. These are your top five news stories of the day. Wichita to host 2025 to 2027 NGCAA soccer championships. Wichita ranked one of the worst cities for disability access. Kansas facing referee shortages, causing high school games to cancel and reschedule. Chiefs and Ravens NFL season opener sets all-time high viewing record with 28.9 million watching. Amazon Prime Series to begin filming on the campus of Wichita State. Have a good day. Next, here is today's word and quote of the day. This week's word of the week is disingenuous. Not candid or sincere, typically by pretending that one knows less about something than one really does. Hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. Tim Notk. We are one day away from our next varsity football game. And we wanted to know what inspires and motivates some of our coaches to take on such a busy schedule. I really like football. I love the game. Being able to go out there on Friday nights is a lot of fun, and the kids make it a lot of fun. The cure and my motive to coach is paying forward the investment that my coach has made in me. Hi, I'm Coach Preheim. I teach physical science, astronomy, and earth science, and also coach football and girls basketball. And I absolutely love both, and I can't see myself doing either without the other. And so uh, what's really exciting about coaching is being able to see kids in an environment outside of the classroom where um, they're doing a little, little uh, things that are more fun, more exciting for them, and see how they interact with people and see them develop those leadership skills and uh, hard work and all those uh, parts of character that, that carry with them through the rest of their lives. So many new faces. Hey, we are almost done meeting all the new teachers, so tune in Hornets for today's spotlighted group of educators. Hello, my name is Mrs. Jost. I am teaching world history and U.S. history, and the thing that I am most excited for this year is to just get to know all my students and get settled in um, this first year of teaching. Hi, I'm Sarah Card. Um, this semester, I will be teaching um, drafting and CAD, as well as architecture, robotics, and principles of engineering. And next semester, I'll be teaching uh, most of the same classes, as well as aviation and hand and power tools. Um, this year, I'm just excited to get to know students um, and get to be in the classroom. This is my first year teaching. Um, I came from the engineering world, so I'm just excited to teach all these wonderful kids um, everything that I know. If you didn't know, the empty chair at the center office represents you and all the other students here in USD 262. It is there to remind the school board and all of the Valley Center faculty who we are working and making decisions for. And now the chair is going to make over thanks to some artistic students. Last year, a couple of advanced art classes were tasked with redesigning the empty chair. The empty chair is meant to represent the students that encourage those at board meetings and teachers at staff meetings to always keep students in mind. The first step of creating this chair was, of course, to come up with a plan. Via anonymous votes, a yellow chair design with purple handprints was chosen. We then proceeded to add the color and handprints to the chair. There is a handprint from at least one person from each school in the district and even includes a paw print from Nugget himself. The Hornet, made by Mr. Dahl, and the USD 262 were added to the chair to show how we are all united by the Hornet and our district. This chair was completely student made and constructed by multiple students across Ms. Rosola's art classes. Recently, this chair was unveiled and presented to the members of the board by a few of the students that created it.
Feel like another September day in Kansas? Let's take a look at today's weather. Hi, I'm Levi Rose. This is today's weather forecast. It's going to be a high of 87 and a low of 60. Now it's time for a quick blast of class. We leave you with this day in history. Stay classy, BC. September 12th, 2001. It's the day after the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington that killed thousands of Americans. In New York, stunned rescue workers search for bodies in the smoking rubble of the World Trade Center. And in Washington, President George W. Bush condemns the attacks, which also badly damaged the Pentagon, as acts of war. Our country will, however, not be cowed by terrorists. 1943. During World War II, Nazi German paratroopers rescue Benito Mussolini, Italy's deposed dictator. They free him from a hotel in northern Italy where his own government was holding him prisoner. Mussolini rules a Nazi puppet state in the north until he's killed near the war's end in Europe two years later. 1960. John F. Kennedy faces critics who question whether being a Catholic should disqualify him for the White House. The Democratic presidential candidate tells a group of Protestant ministers in Houston, I am not the Catholic candidate for president. I am the Democratic Party's candidate for president, who happens also to be a Catholic. I do not speak for my church on public matters, and the church does not speak for me. Kennedy becomes America's first Catholic president when he narrowly defeats Richard Nixon that fall. 1953. Wedding bells for a future White House couple as Kennedy marries Jacqueline Bouvier in Newport, Rhode Island. 1977. In South Africa, black student leader Stephen Biko dies while in police custody. His death triggers a global outcry against South Africa's racist apartheid regime. 